What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today I wanted to talk about red dots on the minimap. Now I know in the past with Modern Warfare 2019, I beat this topic to death. I did talk about this quite a bit, but I feel like I haven't touched on it in quite some time. And one big thing I've noticed is it seems like the big thing that the community was asking for with Modern Warfare 2, which is the 10v10 playlist, it seems like it's been quite successful and it looks like they're actually going to be keeping it around because of its success. So I was thinking, why can't we try this with something else that's really easy for them to implement that the community has been asking for for quite some time just to see if it turns out to be a success as well. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying they should just turn on red dots for the entire game right up front here or anything. Instead, what I'm asking for here is maybe in the future for a limited time playlist, why not try a playlist that we can call maybe classic or something like that, where they have the standard red dot interaction on the minimap that we've experienced in every other Call of Duty game aside from Modern Warfare 2019, Vanguard, and this one. And then perhaps to make it even more classic for this particular mode, they could remove the perk charging so you just spawn in with all of your perks by default. Personally, I think this could work quite well in Modern Warfare 2 without having to make any balancing adjustments in the game or anything like that. And I am going to be laying that out throughout the video, but before we do that, I just wanted to point out that today on my live stream on Twitch, I'm actually doing a charity stream. I haven't done a charity stream in quite some time, so I joined up with Gamers Outreach for this, and we're going to be raising some money there to bring video games to kids in hospitals. So if you guys are interested in coming by the stream and maybe dropping a few bucks for a good cause, I will leave a link to my Twitch stream in the description down below. I should be streaming for a good portion of the day today. Today. But back to the topic of red dots. For those that maybe are confused, maybe you're a bit newer to the Call of Duty franchise and what I'm talking about with red dots, the traditional way that the minimap has always worked in Call of Duty is if you fire an unsuppressed gun, you will show up as a red dot for the enemy team on their minimap. And this would happen even when you didn't have a UAV or spy plane in the air. Whereas in these modern Infinity Ward Call of Duty games, there is no red dot for firing an unsuppressed gun unless your team has a UAV in the air in which case you will now see those red dots when enemies fire their unsuppressed guns. Now, as you may have guessed, I do think the traditional method of handling this is the better method. That's my personal opinion. Infinity Ward seems to disagree, and that's fine. It's their game at the end of the day. But a big reason I'm pitching this and making this video today is I just want to see what this game would play like if we had the traditional red dots. Maybe it would prove me and many of the other people in the community wrong. Maybe it turns out red dots on the minimap are a bad idea. But at the very least, I'd love to see them try, because what if it does the opposite? What if it ends up playing so much better and people start preferring it? In my opinion, I think this would improve the game in several ways. It obviously wouldn't fix all of the game's issues or anything, but I do think this would improve the general pacing and flow on maps, simply because it becomes easier for everybody to read the flow and the positioning, at least the general positioning of enemy players at any time without having to have a kill streak in the air, like a UAV. In fact, the weird thing is, it's less so about me wanting the red dots on the minimap for myself, it's more so me wanting the red dots on the minimap for everyone to give everyone a better sense of direction on the map, because with a better sense of direction, I feel that will encourage people to actively go out and try to engage into fights if they feel more confident in their surroundings. If they know that there's a heavy concentration of enemies over in one area because they're seeing a lot of red dots pop up on that minimap without having to have a UAV in the air, then I think they're going to be a lot more likely to want to push up and find those kills. Whereas when you don't have that information readily available for players, they'll likely be a lot less confident in wanting to push in that direction. And when it comes to Call of Duty, at least in my opinion, I feel it plays best when people are actively going out and seeking engagement, seeking fights, pushing for map control, and actually getting involved in the game rather than just waiting for somebody to walk into their sights. Now that's not to say that you couldn't still play with that playstyle if you chose, if you want to still just sit and camp. By all means, that's a perfectly valid playstyle, as frustrating as it might be to play against. But the main thing here is I don't want people that would otherwise want to be pushing out and going for fights if they had more information. I don't want them feeling like they have to play in a more conservative fashion in order to find success. One common argument against this is, oh, people will just start chasing red dots. And my response to that is, first off, I don't think chasing red dots is the best strategy by any means. That's often just going to get you killed. But a second thing is, if people want to chase red dots, why not let them chase the red dots? I think it's great to give people the tools and they can decide what to do with those tools. If they still want to camp, let them camp. If they want to push with that more information available, let them push. And this leads me to the next improvement that I think we would see if we had the traditional red dots on the minimap. 
And this is, I feel like the UAV kill streak would become a lot less of a crutch because as of right now, if you want those unsuppressed guns to show up on the minimap when enemies fire, you have to have a UAV in the air. As a result, the UAV is one of the most powerful streaks in the entire game, in my opinion at least, especially for how easy it is to earn one. So making it so you're not locking those red dots behind a UAV, and instead the UAV is just for the sweeps on the minimap when enemies aren't firing, I think that will open up more streak options. And another thing with that is it will reduce snowballing. When you think about a really lopsided match where one team absolutely dominates another, that team that's dominating is likely to have a steady stream of UAVs throughout the entire game. And as a result, they effectively just have those free red dots on the minimap every time an enemy fires their gun throughout the entire match. Whereas on the opposite side of that, the team that's getting destroyed, they're not likely to be putting up very many UAVs throughout the game. And as a result, that's an additional disadvantage that they have against them. I feel like UAVs with the current minimap interaction are actually too powerful for what they are. Now finally, there's a big part of this topic we have to address, and this is suppressors. Oftentimes when I bring up red dots on the minimap in the past, people will say, well, this will just make suppressors a crutch attachment. And my first response to that is we've had well over a decade of Call of Duty games that prove that that's not true, as long as you're balancing suppressors properly. Which leads me into the second thing. In Modern Warfare 2, in its current state, I actually think suppressors are balanced in such a way that it would work just fine. I think the trade-off for selecting a suppressor in this game, if we had red dots on the minimap for firing an unsuppressed gun, would be balanced just fine as is. And the first reason behind this is most of the suppressor attachments in this game come with a massive aim down sight speed penalty. So you're gonna be aiming down sight a lot slower, which inherently makes it more difficult for you to win face-to-face -face gunfights while navigating the map. So that right there is a very notable trade-off that you'll have to make. But even for the ones that don't come with a massive aim down sight speed penalty, these will then come with a damage range penalty that's quite noticeable as well. We're looking at about 12% which again, in many situations at least, is gonna make you less effective against people that decide not to use a suppressor. Additionally, we have to look at the opportunity cost of using a suppressor, and that is you can't use one of the muzzle brakes. And muzzle brakes are the best attachments for helping with recoil in this game, and many of them help really significantly with various guns, to the point where I'd almost call them a crutch attachment on certain guns. And as a result, if you decide to go with a suppressor instead of one of these muzzle brakes, you're gonna have a far less accurate gun than the people that go with the muzzle brake, which again, makes you not quite as good at handling those face-to-face -face gunfights. So I do think with the way the suppressors are currently balanced in relation to the other muzzle attachments, they would be just fine. I think many people would still be going with the muzzle brakes for more accuracy and not as much of an aim down sight speed penalty. Whereas those that do decide to go with a suppressor, there are some very notable trade-offs for selecting that suppressor. And this is one of the big reasons I decided to make this video. I really don't think they'd have to make any additional adjustments to the gameplay if they just essentially turned on the red dots on the minimap like we've always had in older Call of Duty games in a limited time mode, like I said. I think it would actually work out quite well. Now, maybe those of us that are saying this are wrong, but what if we're right? Could we end up making a game that more people enjoy and want to play? I think the best way to find out is to simply introduce a limited time mode that comes with this. I mean, Gun Game had red dots on the minimap and many people enjoyed that. So it's obvious that this is just an easy setting for them. From the looks of it, they can turn this on with the flip of a switch, essentially. So let's see how it plays. I don't feel like they have anything to lose by introducing a limited time mode in the future with the standard red dot interaction available. And like I said, just to fit with a the theme of that mode, if we're gonna go with like a classic mode, why not also eliminate the perk charging time? This is another thing that people generally hate in this game, although now that they've reduced it so much, it's not really much of a factor, but then what's the point of having it in the first place? I'm just really curious to see how this game would play if they took some more traditional approaches that stick to the original formula of Call of Duty. I do think this would introduce more gameplay variety, I think it would reduce snowballing, and I also think it would significantly improve the pacing and the flow of a match. Now, of course, all of this is just my opinion, and I'm curious to hear from you guys in the comments down below. What do you think about the idea of them trying out red dots on the minimap in a limited time mode? Do you agree with me? Do you think this would actually work quite well without having to make any other significant gameplay adjustments? Or is it a mode that you wouldn't find yourself interested in at all? Now, just a reminder, there is that charity stream, which may be live as you're watching this video right now, assuming you're watching it the day it came out. So again, I will leave a link to my Twitch channel down below. I'd appreciate it if you could come by and support the stream. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll talk to you guys next time.